Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Kyle informed Diane that he had been fired at home. Diane surmised that his affair with Audra was the reason he lost his job. Diane inquired as to his intentions. Kyle suggested that for a while, he might lead a life of leisure. Kyle, according to Diane, was the sort of person who needed direction, a purpose, and a career. Kyle promised to have that conversation once more when the time was appropriate. Diane questioned if it had ever occurred to him that Jebot would present the ideal chance. Kyla claimed that Jack was aware that he would only rejoin Jabot if Billy was to be the new co-CEO. Kyle was instructed by Diane not to begin packing for a tropical vacation just yet. Kyle was aware that Billy leaving Jabot might be a possibility. Tucker revealed to Audra at the jazz club that he had been considering her on a karmic level. Tucker brought up her remark that if he took the company away from Jack and Billy, she would leave and join him at Jabot. According to Audra, the only thing she remembered saying was that she wanted to keep her options open and not leave the company. Tucker questioned her level of assurance over her future at Newman Media. Tucker said Nikki thought of Audra as a cunning opportunist. Nikki might realize she doesn't belong in that firm, but until then, Audra reminded Tucker she has no reason to leave. She inquired as to what position she would occupy in the event that his plan for Jebot was successful. Tucker retorted that he hadn't yet thought of any specific positions, but Audra could be sure that they would be powerful and prestigious. Audra expected he would be her boss, but Tucker insisted he was just interested in serving as an advisor at most. Tucker explained to Audra that the takeover consisted solely of removing Jebot from Jack. He said that the Abbots had destroyed whatever chance he had of getting Ashley, so he wanted to punish them and hurt them where it hurt. Tucker was questioned by Audra about whether or not she believed the Abbots knew he was after them. Tucker asserted that they unquestionably did and had practically informed him of this, but he also had a secret weapon, Billy Abbott. When Phyllis greeted Jack, he was at the park and walking while texting. Jack asserted that he was not interested in speaking with her. He claimed there was no chance of their getting along anymore and that he didn't feel the need to be respectful or nice. Jack continued by saying that he had no desire to allay her guilt or support her facade of making things right. He said that there had only ever been one connection between them, his son had married her daughter, but that Phyllis had been able to erase it, leaving them with no connection at all. Phyllis admitted to Jack that she had more than screwed up, but that she was making an effort to make amends. That, according to Jack, made no difference to him. He added that after saying his goodbyes to her at her memorial ceremony, she was still dead in his eyes. Daniel joined Phyllis after Jack had departed and said, That was harsh, but Phyllis had it coming. Going back to how things had been, according to Daniel, was not simple, he inquired as to Phyllis' readiness for that. Phyllis acknowledged her ignorance. She claimed to be resilient and capable, but it had made her feel bad. Daniel said that Phyllis needed to concentrate on something uplifting and useful. Phyllis inquired as to what she needed to do as she had become wary of defending herself before those who didn't think she could change. Daniel claimed that Phyllis' credibility had been ruined by pretending to be dead because some people have been hearing that from her for decades. Daniel commanded Phyllis to demonstrate to everyone her sincerity. That, according to Phyllis, was challenging because she kept losing jobs one after another. She said that the insurance company was harassing her about the money that Jeremy Stark had taken from her after she died, and she had no idea where Stark had put it. She claimed that despite her best efforts, she had been unable to locate it. Every time she went on a walk, she claimed, people would gawk at her as if she were the village outcast. She claimed that she was anticipating the upcoming verbal gut hit. Perhaps Stark had been right, Phyllis said, and she should have left town and made a fresh start wherever no one knew her. Daniel questioned if she intended to abandon him in summer once more. Phyllis asserted that they would fare better. Summer and Phyllis wouldn't be, according to Daniel, and neither would they. 
Phyllis wasn't moving, according to Daniel. He questioned how she could quit when she was set to start a brand new job. She received an invitation to join Daniel at Omega Sphere. Although the work wasn't at the highest level, Daniel assured Phyllis that it was still rewarding and engaging. Although Phyllis was pleased, she insisted that Daniel owed her nothing. Daniel assured her that just because she was his mother, she wouldn't receive any special treatment or favors from him. She needed to be dependable and put in a lot of hard work, he continued, and he didn't want to hear any complaints or justifications. He wanted Phyllis to demonstrate her ability to walk the walk to everyone. Daniel advised Phyllis to negotiate a payment schedule with the insurance provider once she began receiving a paycheck. Phyllis instantly remembered a previous conversation she had with Tucker in which she had promised to raise the money legally and Tucker had responded by telling her it would take her 10 years to do it. Daniel was thanked by Phyllis for the chance, but she would have to consider it. Daniel suggested that she consider the time when she would stop putting herself first. Dan departed. Phyllis remembered the exchange with Tucker while she was by herself. Tucker claimed to have recognized Phyllis' predicament and to be willing to help. Tucker promised to add an additional 10% for Phyllis' trouble, which totaled to $2.2 million. When asked if she knew how much that was, Phyllis replied that she didn't. Phyllis whispered to herself as she came back to consciousness, I had to follow Tucker's plan, but after that, I swear to God, never again. She texted Tucker, saying, I'm ready, I'm moving. At the Abbott residence, Jack came. Jack inquired as to if Newman Media had a casual dress day. Kyle informed Jack about his termination by Nikki. Because he needed to clean up his office, Kyle wanted to end the conversation there. Kyle was asked if he was prepared to rejoin his family's business, which was his rightful place. Kyle stated that it depends on Jack's decision to quit disregarding Billy's propensity for making mistakes and reinstall him as co-CEO. Jack expressed regret that Kyle's time at Newman Media had not gone as planned, but he secretly loved the thought that Kyle might come back to Jebot. Kyle asked Jack if there was a chance he could take Billy's place, but Jack responded that it wasn't likely to happen right away because the situation wasn't there yet. Kyle remarked that the conversation shouldn't be taking place. Kyle went. Kyle, according to Jack, had lost his patience. Since Jack had said he was thinking of firing Billy, Diane claimed she was too responsible for it. What was there to consider, she questioned. If Billy left, she claimed Kyle would come back, and they could resume working with their kid. Billy informed society that he had learned Adam had lost his job once more and expressed his sympathy. Adam inquired as to Billy's desires. Billy asserted that he was aware that Adam was in possession of harmful material against Tucker, and that Adam would be open to selling it for the proper sum. Billy inquired as to the price of that knowledge. Why had Tucker come back to town without Ashley? Adam questioned Billy. Billy claimed that both their personal and professional relationships had crumbled. If such were the case, according to Adam, Tucker was a raging megalomaniac who most likely came back for retaliation. What was Billy expecting in exchange for the information? Adam questioned. Billy claimed that until he understood how destructive the information was, he couldn't determine its value. Adam said to Billy that he had been second-guessing engaging in any dubious action with Billy. Billy inquired as to whether Adam's ethical standards were to blame. Adam asserted that he had made a significant personal turn and was now acting modestly. Because he was eager to show Victor and the family that he was willing to till the soil before collecting the fruit, he declared that he would begin at the bottom at Newman and work his way up. Billy chuckled and inquired as to whether Victor had accepted it. Billy claimed it would never happen because people make mistakes all the time. Billy said that despite Adam's best efforts to change, Adam Newman would always be him. Billy commanded Adam to stop acting tough and reveal his asking price so they could continue. Adam stated that he would have to consider the cost. Billy reminded Adam that he had presented the opportunity to him weeks before and that Adam had advised him to get in touch with each other if they were interested in working something out. Billy claimed he was making efforts to come to a resolution, but Adam was being evasive. 
Adam informed Billy that things had changed and that he had moved. Billy claimed that even if Tucker's knowledge was available, it wouldn't be worth the stress Adam had caused him. Tucker showed there just as Billy was about to leave and he stopped him. Tucker claimed to have had a meeting with Billy. Billy remarked that it had to have been someone else before departing. Tucker gave Adam a smile. Tucker urged Adam to stay after he stood up to go. Tucker inquired as to whether there had been any conflict between Adam and Billy. They could never live in harmony, according to Adam, who maintained that it was a permanent condition. Tucker noted that it seemed more particular. Why did Tucker want to know? Adam questioned. Ashley hadn't arrived back from her honeymoon, according to Adam. Adam claimed Billy had referenced the breakdown of Tucker's marriage. Tucker, according to Adam, was enraged and intended to pursue the Abbots. Adam remarked that it had been the quickest honeymoon in recorded history. Adam acknowledged that Tucker had both personal and professional stakes in his marriage to Ashley and inquired as to Tucker's next course of action. Why would he divulge his private affairs to the man who had blackmailed him? Tucker questioned. Technically speaking, according to Adam, he had blackmailed Audra. Adam claimed he had no ill will against Tucker. He simply didn't believe in him. Tucker claimed that while he had no ill will toward Adam, he couldn't give a damn about either the guy, his family, or Newman Enterprises. After receiving Phyllis' SMS, Tucker departed. Audra welcomed Billy when he entered the athletic club. Billy inquired as to Tucker's whereabouts. Billy didn't trust Audra when she claimed she had no idea. Audra questioned why Tucker would confide in her. Billy said that Audra and Tucker had been friends for a very long time and had worked extremely closely together. Billy stated that since Tucker's friendship with Ashley had exploded, he had no doubt that Tucker continued to confide in her. Billy asserted that Tucker had a plan and he was interested in learning what it was. Billy was likely correct, according to Audra, but it was unrelated to her. Billy advised Audra to take all necessary precautions to safeguard herself in the event that he was right and the confrontation with Tucker erupted. If Audra hadn't kept on the good side of things, she said, she wouldn't be where she was. Audra thanked him for his concern before departing. Kyle showed up at the athletic club later. He remembered their earlier chat in the park when he saw Audra. Nikki was aware of their continued secret meetings, according to Audra, and she didn't trust them, particularly Kyle. When Nikki saw them together, Audra claimed she assumed they were still meeting covertly. According to Audra, Nikki instructed her to fire Kyle. Kyle received a personal and professional breakup from her. Kyle retaliated by moving closer to Audra. Audra inquired about his well-being. Kyle retorted cynically, I'm really good. Kyle informed Audra that Nikki had given her no other option, so he didn't hold it against her for firing him. The cutting edge in his voice, according to Audra, didn't appeal to her. Kyle expressed his surprise at Audra's swift ability to suppress her emotions. He claimed that in the space of a second, she had transitioned from her hotel suite to far-off acquaintances. Kyle, according to Audra, spoke as if they had a fairy tale romance. Kyle claimed that he believed it had significance, while Audra insisted that they had simply been two consenting adults who were drawn to one another. She claimed that although they had enjoyed themselves and had fantastic sex, they were moving on with their lives. Kyle's pride may have taken a hit, but his heart was still in good shape, according to Audra, who advised him not to act so hurt. According to Audra, Summer is the love of his and her lives, not her. Kyle, who was displeased, declared that there was no chance of Summer and him reconciling and that their relationship was done. Audra expressed her doubts about that and her sympathy for him. In their relationship, according to Audra, he had been attempting to forget how much Summer meant to him. Kyle was advised by Audra to examine closely and be completely honest with himself because he would find that he missed Summer and still loved her a lot more than he was willing to acknowledge. Billy was waiting outside the athletic club when Phyllis entered and greeted him from inside. When Tucker arrived, he proceeded to his suite while passing Billy and Phyllis. Before meeting Tucker in his suite, Phyllis went to the bar to wait for Billy to leave. 
Billy observed Phyllis ascending the stairs while standing outside the bar. Tucker questioned Phyllis in his suite about if she was prepared to examine Billy's finances. As soon as Tucker deposited money into her account, according to Phyllis, she was. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.